Hello and welcome back to that Eurovision site, Eurovision with a slice of life. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with our series of uh, recaps for national finals. And today we're going to be looking at the 2024 edition of Malta's Eurovi Malta Eurovision Song Contest, aka MESC. <laughs> Um, I'm Kittens, um, and I use pronouns she, her, and I am joined by the very lovely Pete. Um, Pete Shram, uh, he will be using pronouns he, him. Um, so before we start, can people won't be familiar with you necessarily, can you tell us just a bit about yourself and your background with watching Musk? I, uh, I'd be surprised if people were. Well, I'm I'm Pete. Uh, I'm, I actually live in Wisconsin in the United States, so I'm a distant Euro fan. Uh, my journey to Mesk is a funny one. I think any American Euro fan, particularly if you discovered it before a few years ago, had to discover it in the wild. So I didn't know Eurovision was a thing until 2016 when I turned on a television in Switzerland, because when I happened to be there on the right week. And the other trait is I, I love any rabbit hole. So once I discovered Eurovision, I was going to dive into it as hard as humanly possible till I found the bottom. Mesk specifically actually has a little bit of a special place because it was the 2018 year that I really discovered the national finals were there and I started trying to find them. And Malta first was one of the earlier ones that year. I think it was in the end of January, early February. It also just is on its website. You didn't have to play any VPN games to get to it. You just turned on TVM. So it was the first one I watched like going oh there's a smaller country version of this this is fun uh i actually one of my favorite early songs was taboo won that year i really liked taboo so it was a, oh cool songs pop out of these my wife and i actually had a joke because she liked it too that if taboo won eurovision we were going to go to malta on our honeymoon she was my fiance at the time uh we we're going to go to malta on our honeymoon it didn't win but we went anyway because we had been looking at pictures of valetta in for preparation <laughs> for it <laughs> Well, that looks lovely. Let's go. So there's a Malta connection uh, that just became kind of gave MESC a, a special place on that uh, hierarchy of national finals. So every year since 2018, it's just kind of been a little pin on the schedule as I've dived into all of them. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely to hear that you have that connection from from America as well. It's just really a, a lovely, cute way to find the contest. Um, so let's look at Mask this year. Uh, let's do a little summary, set the scene. Um, so the 2024 edition um, started with 36 tracks taking place in four semifinals in October and November, um, of which 12 tracks qualified from the semifinals. So the final, um, which took place in 3rd of February in Valletta. And the winner was Sara Bonici with Loop. Um, so firstly, your thoughts on Loop, the winning track, and how well you think it might do at Eurovision? Well, a Loop, it's a, it's a catchy song. It's It was, a, I think, a, a worthy winner compare, uh, when you look at the field. Uh, it's uh, when, it, when you look at it you know, in the perspective of how it'll do at Eurovision, I mean, it's a catchy song. It's very much in that we're going to have a couple of dance breaks behind a beat style that seems to be gaining a lot of prevalence over the last couple of years. Will it be able to qualify? I think it certainly has a chance. When you look at where it lies on the spectrum, it's it's in the first half of, of the second semifinal. Right now, we don't know Switzerland and Armenia yet. We'll learn yeah. Switzerland tomorrow. But right now, the first half of the second semi is very much a Tanya special. It's six women. Um, <laughs> and we... It's really going to come down to what the staging looks like, what the choreo looks like. It's it's going to depend on how much it can stand out in a field that may look somewhat level when you look at just, I don't know how you make a running order out of a bunch of songs that have very similar characteristics. Naturally, they're very different songs, but it's, it's I think it, I think it can qualify. I mean, it's only going to have to beat six, maybe only five, depending on what eventually happens with Israel songs to get to the final there's only 50 in a it's a smaller year so there's going to be less non-qualifiers period what if it makes it to the final can it make the left hand side of the scoreboard 
not unless they pull out some choreography I don't expect. I always like to be optimistic. Maybe it is going to be the greatest dance break we've ever seen. But it is one of those that I think it's catchy enough. I think it's poppy enough. Those songs have done well recently in terms of the televote. So I think it can qualify. Um, and I think it, I, it, if it's staged right, it's hard to judge because, and we'll get into how it looked or how the show worked. It's tough to judge how it translates to the Eurovision stage because we've only seen it live in a small sound soundstage Tiny somewhere studio. in Malta. It certainly filled the room there, but there wasn't that much room to fill. So how yeah. it expands once you get to the big stage is, I think, going to be the big element that determines whether it qualifies or not. Yeah, I would agree with a lot of what you said. Certainly, what you were saying about where it, it where it is in in that um, half of the semi, um, I personally don't feel like some of those songs are the strongest songs. There are some potential vote winners, but we shall just have to see. Um, I think this lives or dies on its staging, um, and whether it can make it feel big. Um, has a lot of good things and like the song is catchy and the song is quite memorable it's uh going yeah. around on loop yep. <laughs> i mean it doesn't lie to you right up front it no. will be in your head on loop it's <laughs> yeah it's like it, it's got something but whether it has enough is is definitely where i am at it it's it's an interesting year for like upbeat tracks. Um, certainly so far. I mean, I know we haven't got everything yet. We're filming this kind of end of February. Um, so we haven't quite got everything yet. Um, but it's a it's a heavy year for uh, more upbeat tracks. It's not the most original presentation so far. Um, you know, we don't know what they're gonna do on the actual stage. So it's gonna be kind of interesting to see where it goes um i mean malta haven't qualified the last two years um their qualification history isn't great um so whether they will manage to get past that little boost and get going you know is you know um it just depends on how much momentum they can get um, what are the tracks from this year at Mask really stood out to you personally, either from the final or from the semifinals? The um, one of the things, and and when you look at how they presented the show, and we'll go, I think, into it a little more further, is the final tracks presented themselves really well. So I think, unlike some previous masks, we actually got to see a polished version of some. So they they all, I think, were a better slate than I think I've come to expect. Had I been a jury of one. My favorite song was Serena by Erba. That song really, first being in Maltese, I will always, one of the things I love about, again, being a distant Euro fan is the exposure to different languages, uh, different sounds. I would take it over Loop because Loop is very much not a different language nor a different sound. It's a perfectly good song, but there are others. So that was one. The story, as you watched all the of the four of them meeting at songwriting camp and kind of becoming a friend group was just a, it's a, fun story of how a group comes together uh just the the sound even the topic thinking of a mediterranean vibe of the sirens is a it's just a fun connection if you really drill down into layers that i'm probably making up uh <laughs> so that was that was the one that i would have picked from a very jury of one perspective uh another one i don't think you're allowed to talk about mess without acknowledging the existence of matt black yeah uh, <laughs> yeah he he provides Something that a lot of other songs don't. It's it's a little funny that in a year, it probably wouldn't have stood out had it gotten picked in a year where Finland sent Windows 95 Man and Croatia sending Baby Lasagna. There's a little more explosion on stage than I think we're used to up front. But he's built, been up top three years. He really dives into everything he does. I've I've joked that some years, I some year I want them to do like a Andra Shanson Eurovision like every five years, everyone who's just tried a bunch of times, <laughs> let them all have a Eurovision. Like Marcus Riva, Victoria, like just everyone who's tried more than three times, we're going to give you all a chance. I think it'd be a wacky Eurovision, but that's entirely a... So like but, a second chance plus, effectively. Entirely. Like, I, the, um, because he's been, I believe the last three years, or at least three of the last four, he's been in it. His stage performances are always 
extravagant, energetic. So it is one you can't not go, okay, thank you for being there and bringing that energy. It closed the final, which was a correct decision. Yeah. Um, going out with that energy definitely takes you into the host segments with, with some positive energy. There was way back a billion years ago when the first uh, semifinal happened, there was uh, a song by Dominic Siric, Siric, I believe, uh, called Bosa. And that was another in Maltese, really catchy song. It's kind of been lost to the sands of time. A little because bit, yeah. That first semifinal was so long ago. It was buried on a Friday evening afternoon for me. Um, and just the way it came, because it was, here's 12, here's 12, here's 12, here's 12. And now these are the 12 that are going. It happened so long ago that... I think it kind of got lost despite being, I thought, a really solid song in the native language that I wish had gotten the chance for the exposure that it had in the final. The other, just from the format, the third semifinal actually became lost completely to the sands yes. of time because nothing qualified from it. And there was one, uh, Moira had the song Feather Flight in it that I thought was just the kind of song that would be celebrated on like a San Remo stage. Yeah. Of a more established artist performing a really good song that I think just got, again, buried because of the format Malta used. There were a few songs, but that's the one that stands out from that third semi that I I don't think it's a Eurovision qualifier. I don't think it would have won Mask, but I wish it had at least gotten its spot in the final. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I would definitely agree with Serena. Serena is the one song that I heard that instantly I was like, this has something. Um, I, you know, I, it, it genuinely, I, I thought it would get more momentum. I, I, I was a little disappointing with the, uh, dis bleh, a little disappointed with the way it was finally staged. Um, but I, you know, it, it definitely, I would play that song a lot. That would be instantly playlisted if it ever turns up on Spotify. Um, <laughs> I've been checking a little too often for my own good. Same, so. same. I'll, I am, I am not used to like, it, it is somewhat annoying that, that not all these songs have made it to Spotify yet. Um, I definitely also wanted to give a shout out to Banana uh, by Matt Black, just because I felt it was the most complete staging of the night. It, you know, Matt Black is quirky. The song may not be to your liking, but he's a performer. Yeah. You I know, agree regardless of what you think of the song, if you think the song is trash, whatever, that man owns a stage. There's, you know? there's, there's a saying I I say a lot when I'm even just when I'm watching a show with my wife, or I'll post it online. That I like it when somebody goes for it, even if yeah. whatever it is is very strange or very out there. I like it anytime someone just goes. If you're like, going to do yeah. camp. If you're going to do this extravagant staging, you have to go all it. Doing a half-assed attempt is not going to serve you in any way. Doing like some sort of milk toast, eh, it'll do. A man climbing on banana with people with monkey outfits, it's exactly what we needed. Um, <laughs> energy is contagious even when you're on the opposite side of the screen when you're yeah. watching like you you lean into something that is providing that kind of energy to you and it is one of those a show Malta I think was better this year it wasn't as ballad heavy as I think it's been some other years sometimes yeah. you get to Malta and they're trying to force energy at you and it's one of the reasons a Matt Black performance usually stands out yeah it's like oh thank god some energy and this year I I think the whole show was elevated just because there was more energy across the length of the show yeah but it is he he goes for it at a level to which it's beyond endearing it's engaging and... yes and, and the other person i wanted to give a shout out to i think would be gratitude um i i am a little always a bit on the fence about drag queens doing very kind of i don't mean this in the wrong way but kind of drag queeny songs at Eurovision um, because I sometimes feel it's a little cliche um, you know we, we've had great examples of drag queens doing fantastic songs in selections I want to like shout out like Sharon with Aire in Benidorm Fest last year which was just um, but you know 
I thought this was a funny presentation. The song was really memorable. It, you, it had that kind of, you know, to it. It was a lot of fun. Um, it it may not have been like number one on everyone's list, but I really enjoyed that track. And you know, if you're gonna get some fun out of uh Malta, you might as well. You know, it it's a it's a good it's a good memorable track for me personally. I I like you bringing up gratitude, and there's there's two things I'd like to add to it. One is when you look at her track from this year, or is it, there's a you you watch an improvement from last year. Yeah, because for sure. last year's song was nowhere near as good as this year's song. So watching again, one of the enjoyment of watching all the national finals is evolution of artists, getting to see repeat artists, and that was one where this song was a step up. It was definitely a finalist. And there's also an element, I understand it not always like as an art form, wondering how does it fit in? How does it plug into qualifying for Eurovision? But, and maybe this is me as an American staring down the barrel of a lot of very questionable politics nowadays, but seeing it on stages is important at that national level. Even just, I don't want to consider it a token performance. It's an important cog in the whole genre of music. So it does... It makes me happy that it qualifies for finals. It makes me happy that it gets demonstrated on a year on a national stage where people across Europe and a couple of us across the pond are staring at it. I, I think there's an import, and it was. You're right. It was a, it was a very good version of that genre this year. Yes. It was one where I can go if I'm looking at that genre. That's a good one. Yeah, it was just you know it had a little bit more something it was really memorable and it had you know just and i hope she comes back i hope she comes back and does more in in more years because she's just so much fun and so iconic that i would love to see her go for malta or another country at some point you know she's she's she just seems an all-around good egg you know yeah. um so Moving beyond the tracks, what do you think about Mesk in general as a selection process, as you know, as a TV production, um, and kind of beyond the voting, the the pro the amount of programs, the amount of programs. <laughs> it was a lot of programs. It was a lot of programs, and there are parts I like about it, and there are parts that uh, I didn't feel as great about. I like, I'm very much a, give me as many songs as possible. Give me 45 semifinals. I will, I will watch them all. I want to see all your artists. So I, I don't mind when you load up on semifinals. Part of the way they did it, where the shows were so independent of one another and the fact that it wasn't a couple qualify from here, a couple qualify from here. Like, like we said, the third semi is now the lost semi. Yeah. Nothing made it out of it. And there's an element to, okay, well, maybe none of those songs should have. The televote decided it, but it does. They were so separate from one another in production, in just how, which artists were in the, the studio that day. It felt like four shows that didn't necessarily then plug evenly into a final. So there's an element. I, I don't mind it stretching out. I love the number of songs just because I love seeing more artists, but there was a disconnect also, being all the way back in October made it really yeah. hard to connect it to Eurovision season. It was that was something I felt. I was like, "Oh, it's October, and and this is this is on. This is quite a lot, like of stuff." Go and I missed the first few weeks because I was just busy doing other stuff because it's not national final season, and I don't yeah. need to book every Saturday. <laughs> well, it's Friday night, but you know what I mean. Um. It's I f I f I am not the kind of person to say make it shorter. You know, people will watch what they want to watch, and I'm not gonna sit here and be like a fun sponge and be like, don't put all the shows on television, make it that. But equally, I feel like Malta might have a bit of a quality over you know a, a quality problem sometimes. Um there's a lot of quantity of television there um it's just a lot uh it goes on for a long time because there was the four shows and was it four finals and then a qualifier and then 
the whole was, week best it week? was four semis and then like the show where they announced who was qualifying and which then is like a covers night type which, thing yeah which it? was its own and i love a good covers night don't get me wrong hmm. but the it it felt like okay we needed another show because hmm. we need to show you which of the people qualified and then the week of was a very interesting uh very long stretched out let's it was Malta explaining you how much they love Eurovision, which I get. I, yeah. I I sympathize. It it felt like they were almost we need programming all week on TVM, and a few of the segments I there's parts I love. I love getting to know the artists and going deep into again. That's one of the ways we learned how Erba met each other yeah. and the story they had. And it's but there were other elements. The one that will stick with me if it doesn't just haunt me was they would they had a triple segment for each artist and one of them it looked like they were just going to sit down with an interviewer in a normal interview fashion except the interview kept getting interrupted by a game and it was they had an old style telephone on the table and oh they God, would yes it would, yeah, you, it would it would ring and they would pick it up and like a Drew Barrymore from Scream Voice would go, guess the Eurovision song. Oh, yes, yep, yep. And then they would play like a scratchy version of Euphoria. And I don't know why that existed. And it was... I feel like they would have gotten more momentum with some of that if it had been like YouTube content or TikTok content or something yeah. like, like additional alongside the the like on like tv performance i mean i i do regret that you know that you know there's it's not easy to watch back you know apart from the final and snippets and yeah. stuff it's it's not easy to watch back what happened and it it seems a shame to kind of lose a lot of that content you know if you believe it's valuable put it on youtube we will watch the heck out of it if you put it, those silly titles like you did the other year you know <laughs> it was one of those i feel like they they had a lot of ideas and felt the need to use all of them and like that that random guess the artist it also it's not a bad game they uh it's just the way they interrupted an interview to play it felt like they misplaced it there was uh, a game of qualified or non-qualified, which every Eurovision fan loves a good game of Q yep. or NQ. <laughs> Again, it didn't. Uh, I didn't understand where it plugged in. It almost felt like they had four shows, but they didn't make four shows. They put four shows throughout the week. They also had one of the hosts doing a truly interminable alphabet of Eurovision, which was kind of a great show about Eurovision, but also didn't plug into what they felt like they were trying to do. I it it felt a little disjointed, and yeah. I some of these is just bringing like flashbacks, effectively, and I'm just like, what the hell happened in this week? I mean, kudos to them for having all these ideas and making all this content and making it such a big deal, but I feel like it just needs a lot more refining, um, to kind of reach a kind of stage of being like an icon. Like Musk is not generally regarded well by the fandom um and it could just do with that a little bit more let's change how we're doing things to move on um i think it's it's you know it is sometimes unfairly badly regarded like uh, the songs aren't bad the production is fine you know they they just need a little push more to get that refinedness to it um I, that some I other like there were have. elements there were elements they did i feel that succeeded in that like one thing i originally am skeptical i love a good in a theater in an arena final but there was an element of having the live performances on a soundstage made for better live performances it did show yep. people the songs in a much more polished format i think it did the songs more justice than you would sometimes see i I think of previous live MECs or a show like like ESCZ this year that I don't think necessarily does justice to the performances because of sound issues, staging yeah. issues. Like I they feel clearly, like they I feel like 
ESCZ yeah. and Mask are like the antithesis of each other. ESCZ yeah. done and over with in like a night, effectively. <laughs> Slight sound, you know, tried to do things live, had a bit of a problem. Mask really long, tried to do things not live. Yeah. didn't have problems but doesn't get the engagement so it, it's like yeah. I, I do think they could take the all the ideas they had condense them streamline them like the way they rolled out the music videos was kind of nice kind of in mm. had they done an order of operations of introduce the artists introduce the video here's the live performance now let's vote i i think there's a really good set of shows in there Yep. And hopefully hopefully they take the right lessons from it because I think they did some things really positively this year. I, yes. Again, it was one of the first times you could watch a Mask final and go, I thought these were good performances. These were genuinely all solid. Well, the sound was good. The the As much as choreo, the displays, like the, the performances, even though I think not actively live, gave the feel of a polished live show. Yes. And I think you can really take some good lessons from that because again, they... They went from 36 to 12 and they got a good 12. So they there's, did, yeah. there's, I do agree with you. Having the entire set run from October to February may not be ideal. We could probably drop that to a few weeks, but the, and again, there are things you lose with that disconnect from even when yeah. you finally pick your 12 to when you finally show everybody your 12. Uh, but I thought from that perspective, once they got to the final, they, the final itself, the last day was was really good. Had some fun host segments. There was clearly camaraderie between all the artists. Yeah, like that was really nice. I really the liked seeing room. that when you. Um, so the final itself had all the pieces of a, a very solid show. It's just taking that and going, okay, what what in here didn't land the way I think we would have preferred, and yeah. then shifting it around. But the foundation I think has been built for a really solid set of shows. Yeah, and hopefully they can just learn from this and go forward, you know. Um, I feel like the musical quality was genuinely a lot better this year and the presentation of that music was a lot better. So they are clearly getting somewhere, but whether they are getting there fast enough, you know, we'll see. Um, That brings us to the end of this recap. Um, Pete, where can people follow you if they love you? Because they should. <laughs> they should if they if they want a lot of perspective on the american perspective of eurovision and a lot of women's sports uh on whatever they're calling twitter nowadays i'm at pete 21982 because when you picked your aol instant messenger name you live with it forever <laughs> uh, uh we're the same generation <laughs> i'm uh I, I'm on Instagram, I believe this exact same. I think if you can find me, I'm always that handle. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, there wasn't a lot of competition from Pete's specifically born in mid-February in the early 80s. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for coming and doing this Musk recap with me. It's been lovely to have you here. Um, if you enjoyed this recap, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to um, that Eurosites YouTube channel so you can be notified when we have a new recap. We have lots coming out at the moment. Um, we also have interviews, reaction videos and other content all coming in on that channel and we'll be interviewing loads of artists at pre-parties and stuff as we go on. Um, also be sure to follow us on all our social media so that Eurosite on Twitter, Facebook, Threads, Blue Sky, Tumblr um and instagram um don't forget to check out that eurovision podcast as well on all streaming sites um and all that's left for me to say is thank you so so much pete for being here and thanks everybody for watching kittens out bye